So nuclear fission, which is the way that we produce uh, energy in all the operational nuclear reactors that we have on the planet. So nuclear fission happens when a stable isotope is struck by a neutron. The isotope absorbs a neutron, so the nucleus of the atom absorbs this neutron. Remember, neutron has doesn't have any charge, so it doesn't get repelled from the positively charged nucleus. But the neutron has to strike the nucleus pretty much dead on. That nucleus, uh, the isotope, the mass number increases by one, and this makes the isotope unstable. And certain isotopes will then split into two pieces, two daughter nuclei, and release lots of energy. Now, fission is not something that happens naturally. We have to provoke it. So isotopes that will undergo fission include uranium-235 and plutonium-239. We can use both of these either in a controlled way in a nuclear reactor or an uncontrolled way in nuclear weapons. The fission of one kilo of uranium-235 releases more energy than burning two million kilos of coal. One kilo of uranium releases more energy than burning two million kilos of coal. So for climate change, nuclear power is a lot better. There are two major isotopes of uranium that we find in nature, 238 and 235. Uranium-235 is a normal one, but it doesn't undergo nuclear fission. About 0.7% of naturally occurring uranium is uranium-235, which will undergo nuclear fission. So before we can use it in power stations, we need to enrich or purify a little bit of uranium until we get about 3% uranium-235, and the 97 remaining percent is uranium-238. So we have to like concentrate or purify the uranium-235. We make this into fuel rods, which we then put in these casings here. You can see the, the rods that are there being inserted into uh, a casing which is going to go into the nuclear reactor. And you see the guy is doing this with his hands. Uh, the uranium-235 by itself is, is not... Is not mm, radioactive, it's not unstable, it's not dangerous to work with. So, nuclear fission is how we generate the heat in a nuclear power station. So, first of all, we put these control, these, sorry, these control, these fuel rods, with uranium-235 enriched, uranium-235, into the reactor. These are called the fuel rods. And the fission is going to happen in the nucleus of this uranium-235. A neutron has to be slow-moving neutron, not fast-moving neutrons. Slow-moving neutron gets absorbed by the uranium-235 nucleus, so it becomes uranium-236, which is extremely unstable. So quickly, it splits into two smaller pieces. One of the ways it can split is into barium-144 and krypton-90 and then there's three uh, neutrons left over that also get released and when these two daughter nuclei are released they fly off in opposite directions crashing into neighbouring mm, atoms uh, causing them to vibrate and hence this being heat energy that is being released so here we've got uranium-235 plus a slow-moving neutron makes uranium-236 which very quickly almost instantly splits into two daughter nuclei. Here we've got different ones, strontium-90 and xenon-144 and also some neutrons. These neutrons fly out at very high speed, fast-moving neutrons. And these two nuclei are called daughter nuclei. Biologists, watch out, these are not daughter, cell, daughter cells like in binary fission by bacteria, no, 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 this is daughter nuclei, don't make that mistake, don't want biology on your physics exam. So, uh, there's lots of different combinations of daughter nuclei, okay, these are just examples. We can draw nuclear equation, so we've got uranium, 92 protons, there's no protons in the neutron, 
This gets split into krypton, which is 36, and barium, which is 56. And again, no protons in the neutrons, so 56 plus 36 gives us 92. So all the protons are accounted for. Uranium 235 plus a neutron, so we've got a massive 236. So if we add together 90, 143, and 3 neutrons, so that would be 3 there. 3, 146, plus 90... 236. So all the protons, all the neutrons are accounted for. Okay? We've got to always balance out these decay equations. However, if you add up the mass of all of these, it's slightly less than the mass of these because some of the mass is turned into energy. So how do we use this to generate electricity? Well, like any other traditional ways of making electricity, these, this fission in the uranium rods in the reactor releases heat. That heat is used to boil water in a boiler. That turns into steam, turns a turbine. Turbine turns a generator. Generate, generates, generates, generates electricity for the national grid. Steam is cooled down and used again as liquid water in the boiler and the National Grid brings this electricity to our houses. Some of the daughter nuclei are stable but lots of them are unstable and radioactive for example strontium-90 undergoes a beta decay to turn into yttrium-90 half-life of this is 28 years. Yttrium-90 undergoes again a beta decay to go and turn to zirconium 90 half-life of this is 64 hours so this waste will be will having a half-life of 30 odd years will be radioactive for many 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 years to come and often we have a series of decay reactions which we call decay series so eventually the uranium-235 in the fuel rods gets all used up and the fuel rods need replacing. So the spent fuel uh, contains the waste products from the fission or the, uh, the daughter nuclei which are radioactive and some of these isotopes remain radioactive for thousands of years to come. For example plutonium-239 is formed when uranium-238 that's in the fuel rod is bombarded by neutrons and this is extremely toxic and it's used as fuel in other types of reactors plus it's also used to make nuclear weapons. Uh, other ones like strontium-90 and iodine which is easily absorbed by the body. So the combination of isotopes that can be absorbed by the human body and the fact that they'll be radioactive for thousands of years means that the nuclear waste from these reactors has to be very carefully controlled and looked after. So we send these uh, spent fuel rods to a reprocessing plant to recover any uranium that we can use and plutonium uh, and then the other waste isotopes we don't have any uses for them we can't release them to the environment because they're too dangerous too radioactive so we have to store them away in what we call cemeteries in steel reinforced steel drums and underground in concrete cemeteries for thousands of years to come